Hello, how are we? And welcome to episode four of Metabytes. And today I want to talk a little practical with you, I think. I want to talk a little bit about SEO when it comes to your WordPress website. And that's, we are primarily WordPress based, so all our web development is based on that platform, which is powering over 30% of all the websites in the world, which is quite a freaky statistic. So today I want to talk about SEO and just some of the basics that you need to bear in mind when creating your site or adding content to your site. Number one is the plugin. So it is very useful to have a S an SEO plugin on the site because it makes it easier, even from a developer perspective and designer perspective, it makes it easier to have an SEO plugin on site so you're not sort of uh, plugging, sort of updating code in the back end and stuff like that. It gives you a, a much easier, easier setup to, to kick your SEO goals. Traditionally, Yoast has been the kind of number one SEO plugin to use, but we've We've been finding it just comes with a little bit too much baggage. There's a lot of extras that you get with it, or it's asking you to do this, it's asking you to do that. There's boxes here, there's boxes there, there's, there's stuff happening all over the place. So we've transitioned away from Yoast SEO and moved to a plugin called SEO Framework, which I've found to be super clean, super simple, which, you know, in this day and age is nice. Simplicity is good. So that was just a, a quick heads up in regards to plugins. If you are creating a new site for your business, maybe look at SEO framework as the SEO plugin of choice because it's just much cleaner, much simpler than Yoast. But I mean, you know, big ups to Yoast. They've done such a great job over the last few years and are still by far the number one, the number one plugin for SEO on WordPress websites. But let's get a little bit into detail of things you need to think about. When you're adding images or you have existing images on your website, please make sure that you add alt tags on your images. It's a really important aspect for images. When Google is indexing your site, it will look at images and the alt tag is kind of you telling Google what the image is of. And you always, with all SEO, always think relevancy. So don't just try and fill it with keywords because you need to fill it with keywords. Choose a relevant keyword for the image and it will it will start doing its thing. But just make sure you've got them because a lot of sites we get onto um, or take over to manage, we find that pretty much all of their media library is filled with images that are free of any alt tags. So go through Make sure you have your alt tags on your images. You know, if you've got an image of a bit of cheese, if you're <laughs> a bit of cheese, if you're a cheese making factory and you've got a website, name the cheeses like you've got some Edam there. Make sure you put in Edam Cheese Perth, you know, in your alt tag. So just it's a really simple process to go through. You know, if you've got 50 images on the site, you can quickly go through that and do that in sort of quarter of a day quite easily or in an hour or so even. So make sure you put your image alt tags. And I suppose what I should have talked about firstly is just your kind of setup on your website. Traditionally, you will have kind of your service pages or what you do. And these are kind of like your keyword pages. So if you are a cheese factory, you will have a page about what you do making cheese and this will be one of your key keyword pages. So once you've got these sort of static pages set up on your website and what you should be doing is obviously blogging and adding content to your website and news and events and stuff like that as much as possible, you want to create links, relevant links within the site. So you're putting out a new cheese and you're writing a blog article about it and you're saying, you know, this week we just released our best Jarlsberg cheese. In that article, you want to make sure that you are linking internally in your website to the main service page about your cheese. Google will look at your news article, go, okay, Jarlsberg cheese, great, 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 great. You've used some great SEO content. You're obviously using the word cheese quite a bit. 
you've got a little thing talking about Jarsberg cheese, so you highlight that, link it through to your cheese page, and that's just a very relevant link within your within the makeup of your website. So if you keep doing that, you know, you've got a whole heap of blog posts that are linking back to relevant pages about what you do or service pages. You know, if you're a company that does like three different things and your blog article is about one of these things, make sure you link that blog article through to that service page or static page about that part of your business. That sort of interlinking on a website is really, really important. And it's a really simple process just to get into when you're creating your content for your blog articles. Um, and re and rele relevant links throughout your website. If you've got a sort of one of these sort of tri trendy, oh, I was going to say trend, not even trend, they've been going around for years and years, these sort of single page or sorry, these home pages, sort of long scrolling home pages, and you've got bits about your business, make sure when you're talking about whatever service or whatever part of your business you're talking about that you link part of that or read more or learn more that goes to that page. So you're giving a sort of highlight on the home page about a specific part of your business. Make sure you link that through to the internal part, the main the main page about what, what you're talking about. And ho hopefully this is making sense because I do sound like I'm rambling. Um, I think the cheese thing threw me off. And of course, using the plugin that you have put onto your website, which is hopefully the SEO framework plugin, once you've created your static pages or your blog pages, you will have a couple of boxes at the bottom of the editing page where you can enter in your SEO title and SEO description. And this is this is what's going to appear in, in the Google listing. So you really want to make sure this number one has your keywords in it, Jarlsberg cheese, and and reads well and is relevant. No, you're again you're not trying to fill it with it with sort of SEO keywords, but you're wanting to create something that is interesting to read, isn't too long. And this is where the SEO plugins work really well because they will tell you if you're not using enough words and if you're using too many. So it gives you a really good balance, gives you a green light, which is which is great. So you want to make sure that your page titles, page descriptions are set correctly on your site. So I really just want to talk about these things for today and that's probably it you know making sure that you've got your alt tags on your images make sure you're linking your pages and your blog news articles correctly to your service pages and from the home page into your into your internal static pages and your page title and page description if you are vigilant in doing these things when you're either building your website or updating your website you will start to get traction on Google. You will get organic traction over time if if you're clever with it. And the big thing to think about is the relevancy. Always be relevant. Google's very clever. If you're trying to sneak in keywords here and there and it doesn't make sense, you want to again, you just want to make sure that the the information that you're putting out helps your target audience. Because that's target audience is looking for something you're found on Google, relevant, they click it, they go to your site, and the interaction starts. So it's it's kind of as simple as that. I think a lot of people overthink SEO, and it is a very complex, complex beast, and you can go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. But if you do some of the basics right, we've, you know, we've had amazing success with with businesses, My Dress Circle, who um, hire designer dresses. They've had consistent rankings on the first page, which has been really good. We've also had Danish Patisserie, who are a commercial bakery in Perth, and we've been doing really, really well with um, their keywords right from the beginning. And this is all just using the points that I have been talking about in this episode. S hopefully my rant makes a little bit of sense and you know if you end up finding yourself buying some cheese later on you'll you'll know what <laughs> you'll know that i influenced your day have a great one and if i don't speak to you before christmas which i hopefully will because i should be doing another podcast next week i will speak to you very soon peace out mm -hmm.